Thanks for being with us here on Business Now. Well, Resources Minister Madeleine King today outlined the government's future gas strategy, which envisions gas in our energy mix until 2050 and beyond. Her statement sport howls of protest from environmental groups in a social media pile on things like this. This is an appalling and shameful policy. The planet is cooking, said one. Not something you should be proud of, love, said another condescendingly. And will Australians be left to fend for themselves to start again year after year, flood after flood, fire after fire? Now, what Australia can't be proud of is that of 39 developed countries, we have the most volatile electricity market in the world. That's according to Rystad Energy. It has the greatest price fluctuations because of the outages of coal-fired generators. So if not gas to shore up our system, then what? Let's bring here Kaushal Ramesh, who is Vice President of Gas and LNG at Rystad Energy. Kaushal, many thanks for your time. Um, just when you said Australia had the most volatile electricity grid in the world, just how did you judge that? Just within the intraday um, price fluctuations within the power market, particularly um, in the NEM, um, some of these instances were exacerbated in 2022 when we had a raft of coal, uh, coal outages uh, coinciding with the cold snap towards um, July and August of 22. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's sort of what we've observed. So that being the case, with more gas in the system, if the government then assures the, the industry that there is more gas in the system, does that also suggest that um, more, you know, sort of uh, more gas-fired power stations, um, that we've actually got the ability to have that instant electricity that Australia will need from time to time? No, indeed, indeed. Um, one of the one of the features of the transition that we're observing, um, first in Australia, and it will happen in other parts of the world as well, is that as the power system becomes um, uh, more renewables heavy, and especially when Australia, where um, I think more than 50% of the NEM is, is coal-fired, for instance. As we start to see that coal exit and renewables come on, we will see that that, that the demand for gas-fired power becomes extremely um, volatile. And, and having more gas on standby to be able to support that definitely will help to smooth out the peaks. OK, so that being the case, do you see that Australia's volatility for its electricity supply and pricing, do you see any relief for that from the statement that the government has made to assure that gas will be in the system up to 2050 and beyond? Well, well, this statement is likely, the, I think, among the first explicit admissions that gas has the role to play uh, in 2050 and beyond. We've seen a few implicit admissions over the past year or so that we've had so many of these market interventions. However, uh, a lot of this sort of depends on whether there will be actions to follow through on this policy and whether we really will see more investment in, in new supply. And, and the way the gas system works is um, everything, all investments take time. So a decision made today will, will probably lead to supply a few years down the road. So any sort of relief is, is probably not going to be immediate. But then what about places such as Victoria, which traditionally has had a very heavy usage of gas in industry and in households, which right now are saying that any new home that is to be built will have no gas appliances whatsoever. What does that do in terms of the, the energy mix in Australia? Well, the, the Victorian market is undergoing a, a profound change where they've always had um, low-cost conventional offshore, um, offshore gas supply um, that's underpinned their residential and, and commercial demand. And a lot of that now needs to be replaced with relatively inflexible sources of supply from the north um, um, that have run into pipeline capacity constraints in the past. So um, for them, uh, either they need to look for more, more alternatives within the state, but uh, hopefully that would be conventional sources as well, or the options, there, there are more and more options that they can consider around electrification as well as LNG imports, and all of this has been discussed. But the one thing is that even though there is said to be good gas reserves potentially in Victoria, the reality is unless they exploit them, which, as you point out, takes time, environmental measures, all those types of things, the reality is there could be gaps in that supply, which means that they'll be reliant on interstate supplies, which, as you point out, also creates issues with pipelines. Oh, yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so a lot of this is, is going to have to be... And so the governments have started to take 
steps to um, mitigate some of these risks as well with, with subsidies for switching away. But yeah, all of it is, is going to take time. And particularly um, within the East Coast market, we do see a lot of risk over the next um, five years or so um, is, is um, the point will come where the LNG um, producers in the North will have to choose between their export contracts and the domestic market if we don't see new supply sources being brought online. Kashel Ramesh from Rice Energy. Many thanks for your time on the program today. Thanks very much for having us.